Welcome to Unit 1, Global Heritage of the American People prior to 1500. This is the first unit that we will be working on this year, and we're going to learn all kinds of things about how the early people of the United States arrived here and made their lives here. So take out your notes and begin to follow along. Over here in the first image on the left, we see an image of Berengia. We'll get to that shortly. That's where we will start this unit. Um, we have a map of the routes that nomadic humans took as they move into the Amer moved into the Americas from Asia. That's where we're headed also in this video. And then finally we have an Iroquois longhouse. By the end of this unit you'll know all about all three of these topics and um, you will be a better citizen for it. All right, um, two images that we're going to look at to start this off with are these people here walking. They have their dog, they have their, their weapons. What I want you to do is look at that image and think about what uh, tools are they carrying? What are they made of? Why are they made of that material? And then look at their clothing. As the caption says that they are made of animal skins and plants, so why? And think about your life today. Why do you wear the clothing that you wear? Why do you do the things that you do? Use the materials that you use. And then compare the two. On the right, we have a map uh, that shows the route that nomadic humans took as they move in, moved into the Americas from Asia. You're going to see this map quite often. You'll see it in this video and in the next video as well. Okay, um, here is where our course begins. At the, during the last ice age, which lasted between 20,000 and 40,000 years ago, glaciers covered a large part of the northern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere includes North America, Europe, and northern Asia. Because these glaciers covered all, um, so much land, water levels in the oceans decreased. Because the level of the ocean went down, um, land was exposed in the Bering Strait between Asia and North America. It's way over here between Alaska and Asia, Alaska and present-day China or sorry, Russia. The land bridge is known as Beringia, and it was about 750 miles wide. So from its northern point to southern point, it's about 750 miles. That's a lot of land, and a lot of land that today it's covered by water. An ice age is a period of time when glaciers covered many parts of the northern hemisphere. And those glaciers that we've mentioned a couple times, they are huge sheets of ice, sometimes up to two miles thick. That's 11,000 feet thick. Well, 10,400 feet thick. Um, so huge amounts of ice and water were on the land. All right, here is a close-up of the Bering Sea, the Bering Strait, as it looks today. There's a very small piece of water that goes through between Alaska and Siberia and if that water the water levels lowered there would be land that would be visible just like this and this is what we believe Beringia looked like this is during the ice age once again um, the land bridge is called Beringia or we'll refer to it as the land bridge now early American migration this is how that how it worked. Herds of animals migrated over land the land bridge. Migration means they moved from one place to another in big groups. A huge number of people, thousands and thousands of people moved over the land bridge. And they did this though over 10, 20,000 years. So it's not like a gigantic number of people just arrived one day. Um, they were groups of human nomads and they were following herds across the land bridge over thousands of years, as you see over here, over thousands of years, these humans, they migrated into all different parts of North America, depending on the weather, depending on how the, uh, the um, glaciers were at the time. And you'll see in another video um, that not all the early humans even took the land route. 
they came by water. A nomad is a person or a group of people who move from place to place in search of food. And keep in mind that these were Stone Age people. Take a look at these people in this image here. Uh, they used stone tip spears. They used very primitive technology. Here's a close-up of that image. Early humans migrating from Asia to North America, coming through uh, splits in the glaciers, areas that were had been melted, weren't quite cold enough to have the glaciers. And remember, glaciers are always moving. So because of the movement, these the, tr the uh, paths would change. And that would also push people to move into different sections of, the, of North America. Again, the route that people took. They came from Asia over here on the left, and they went to North America on the right. This map shows how, um, or the area, the way that the people from Asia spread out into North America, and eventually, over thousands and thousands of years, the, the Americas, North America and South America, were populated by these original Asian people. Okay, um, early humans lived during a period of time known as prehistory. And prehistory is the period of time before humans learned how to write. Today, we don't live in prehistory because we know how to write, we know how to record our uh, history. And we, as archaeologists and we as historians, we study the written words of people. But also, we can study um, items left by people that lived during prehistory. So we study things such as stone. Um, their tools, their arrowheads, their spears, anything that could be left behind. We even study their bones to see how they died, how they lived, uh, what food they ate. You can tell by what's left in their teeth even, or how their teeth are worn down. Uh, you can tell what kind of food they ate based on the chemicals left in their bones. It's really amazing the technology that we have to study these early humans that, again, they left no written record because they lived in prehistory. They did not have a written language. So we can study cave paintings as well. Um, the areas that they did their, that they that they made their paintings tells us a lot. Uh, so it's just really neat and we'll get into that this year. Um, an archaeologist is a scientist who searches for and studies artifacts in order to learn how early people lived. So these artifacts um, again, I gave you examples, uh, and I'll give you more, but uh, artifacts are objects made by humans, such as tools, weapons, and pottery, and left behind by them. Every artifact that we find, we can tell something about the person that made it. You can tell what kind of technology they had, what kind of um, resources they had, and their, their ability to craft weapons to craft, pottery, whatever it is, it tells something about the people. And in this image you see an example of a dig site, and we're going to show you this in class too, but um, this a, a dig site is where archaeologists go and dig up artifacts, or they search for early human artifacts. And the oldest items are down on the bottom here on level three. So look at the level of technology. Spears, charcoal, animal bones, sharpened flint. That's basic Stone Age technology. Now, going up a little bit higher, you know, not as deep as you dig down, level two has arrowheads, fish hooks, pottery, corn kernels. That tells archaeologists and historians a lot. If there are corn kernels, these people know how to farm, whereas the people on level three, the older group did not. They were hunters, hunter-gatherers. Then looking up at the top, level one, the most recent level, there's our metal knives, arrowheads, iron cooking pots. Oh man, Spanish suits of armor. That shows us that these people um, had contact with Spanish, with the Spanish. So wherever this dig site is, if it's in North America, we could place the time that these people lived and we could we can learn a lot just from knowing what kind of material is located on that level. 
Okay, um, so for the people, well, even today, uh, we have oral history, but especially for people who uh, do not have a written history, they use a technique or a feature called oral history. Oral history is the passing on of a person or group's history through the telling of stories and singing of songs. On the personal level, you probably know some oral history, um, but on the on the entire group level, you you we, we don't do oral history as much um, because we have written language. But groups that don't have a written language, they would pass their history on orally through the telling of stories and singing of songs. Another uh, another word that you need to know and that you will know by hopefully tomorrow is culture. That's the way of life for a group of people how people live, how they dress, what they believe in. All of that is culture, and we're going to study culture quite deeply this year. All right, so let's look a little bit deeper at the first Americans. Um, they were people that depended on hunting and gathering for food and clothing. They did not know how to farm. They couldn't farm, be it because of the environment, the technology that they had. They just didn't know how to farm. And again, we're talking 20 to 40,000 years ago. Um, even up until 10,000 years ago, people just didn't know how to farm. Um, their tools and weapons were made from stone, bone, and wood. And they followed herds of animals across the land bridge to North America. That's the general synopsis of the first Americans. They hunted mammoth, deer, bison, bear. Basically, anything that moved, they hunted some of the fruits that they picked um, were anything found out in the wilderness that didn't kill them. And if it did kill them, well, it killed one or two, and then the, pe the rest of the group learned not to eat that kind, of, um, that kind of fruit or berry. Around 7,000 BC, so we're looking at 9 to 10,000 years ago, humans in Central America learned how to plant seeds, grow food, and farm. And uh, the main, the three major crops that they grew were corn, beans, and squash. Corn, beans, and squash, you'll see in another video, they grow together well. They're hardy. They survive um, harsh climates well. And they also grew, early humans grew peppers, tomatoes, pumpkins, tobacco, cotton, and you'll learn about the Inca who grew potatoes. Over time, other humans also learned how to farm. And it allowed civilizations to emerge. Civilizations being an advanced culture with a religion, cities, governments, written language, and social classes. Um, people settled down. They didn't live as nomads anymore. They didn't chase food around. They grew their food instead. And because they needed to stay in one place. They had to protect their crops. They had to tend them and harvest them. And we're going to study uh, two of our of the first American civilizations, or major, major, major American civilizations, the uh, Aztec and the Inca. They were located in Central and South America, which makes sense because the weather there, the climate, is very mild. It's it's tropical. It's easy to grow crops, easy to grow food, and support large populations of people. 